part three of agamemnon by aeschylus translated by robert browning this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part three chorus and how should oath bond honourably binding become thy cure no less i wonder at thee that thou beyond sea reared a strange tongued city shouldst hit at speaking just as if thou stoodst by cassandra prophet apollon put me in this office chorus what even though a god with longing smitten cassandra at first indeed shame was to me to say this chorus for more relaxed grows every one who fares well cassandra but he was athlete to me huge grace breathing chorus well to the work of children went ye law's way cassandra having consented loxias i played false to chorus already when the wits inspired possessed of cassandra already townsmen all their woes i foretold chorus how wast thou then unhurt by loxias anger cassandra i no one aught persuaded when i sinned thus chorus to us at least now sooth to say thou seemest cassandra hallo hallo ah evils again straightforward foresight's fearful labour whirls me distracting with prelusive last lays behold ye those there in the household seated young ones of dreams approaching to the figures children as if they died by their beloveds hands they have filled with flesh the meal domestic and trails and vitals both most piteous burthen plain they are holding which their father tasted for this i say plans punishment a certain lion ignoble on the bed that wallows house-guard ah me to the returning master mine since to bear the slavish yoke behooves me the ship's commander ilion's desolator knows not what things the tongue of the lewd she-dog speaking outspreading shiny souled in fashion of ate hid will reach to by ill fortune such things she dares the female the male slayer she is how calling her the hateful bite beast may i hit the mark some amphisbina scullah housing in rocks of mariners the mischief revelling hades mother curse no truce with breathing at friends how piously she shouted the all courageous as at turn of battle she seems to joy at the back bringing safety of this too if i not persuade all's one why what is to be will come and soon thou present true prophet all too much wilt pitying style me chorus thyestes feast indeed on flesh of children i went with and i shuddered fear too holds me listing what's true as life no wise out imaged cassandra i say thou agamemnon's fate shall look on chorus speak good words o unhappy set mouth sleeping cassandra but paion stands in no stead to the speech here chorus nay if the thing be near but never be it cassandra thou indeed prayest they to kill are busy chorus of what man is it ministered this sorrow cassandra there again wide thou look'st of my foretellings chorus for the fulfiller's scheme i have not gone with cassandra and yet too well i know the speech hellenic chorus for pythian oracles thy speech and hard too cassandra papai what fire this and it comes upon me ototoi lukeon apollon ah me me she the two-footed lioness that sleeps with the wolf in absence of the generous lion kills me the unhappy one and as a poison brewing to put my price to in the anger she vows against her mate this weapon wedding to pay him back the bringing me with slaughter why keep i then these things to make me laughed at both wands and round my neck oracular fillets thee at least ere my own fate will i ruin go to perdition falling boons exchange we some other ate in my stead make wealthy see there himself apollon stripping from me the oracular garment having looked upon me even in these adornments laughed by friends at as good as foes 
in the balance weighed, and vainly. For called crazed stroller as I had been gypsy, beggar, unhappy, starved to death, I bore it. And now the prophet, prophet me undoing, has led away to these so deadly fortunes. Instead of my sire's altar waits the hack block she struck with first warm bloody sacrificing. Yet nowise unavenged of gods will death be, for there shall come another, our avenger, the mother slaying Sion, father's doomsman, fugitive wanderer from this land in exile, back shall he come, for friends copestone these curses. For there is sworn a great oath from the gods, that him shall bring hither his fallen sire's prostration. Why make I then like an indweller moaning, since at the first I foresaw Ilion's city suffering as it has suffered, and who took it, thus by the judgment of the gods are faring. I go, will suffer, will submit to dying. But Hades' gates, these same I call, I speak to, and pray that on an opportune blow chancing, without a struggle, blood the calm death bringing an easy outflow, I this eye may close up chorus oh much unhappy but again much learned woman long hast thou outstretched but if truly thou knowest thine own fate how comes that like to a god-led steer to altar bold thou treadest cassandra there's no avoidance strangers no some time more chorus he last is anyhow by time advantaged cassandra it comes the day i shall by flight gain little chorus but know thou patient art from thy brave spirit cassandra such things hears no one of the happy fortuned chorus but gloriously to die for man is grace sure cassandra ah sire for thee and for thy noble children chorus but what thing is it what fear turns thee backwards cassandra alas alas chorus why this alas if tis no spirit's loathing cassandra slaughter blood dripping does the household smell of chorus how else this scent is of hearth sacrifices cassandra such kind of steam as from a tomb is proper chorus no syrian honour to the house thou speak'st of cassandra but i will go even in the household wailing my fate in agamemnon's life suffice me ah strangers i cry not ah as bird at bush through terror idly to me the dead bear witness this much when for me woman there shall die a woman and for a man ill-wived a man shall perish this hospitality i ask as dying chorus o oh, sufferer thee thy foretold fate i pity cassandra yet once for all to speak a speech i fain am no dirge mine for myself the sun i pray to fronting his last light to my own avengers that from my hateful slayers they exact too pay for the dead slave easy managed hands work chorus alas for mortal matters happy fortuned why any shade would turn them if unhappy by throws the wedding sponge has spoiled the picture and more by much in mortals this i pity the being well to do insatiate a desire of this born with all mortals is nor any is there who well-being forces off a roints from roofs whereat a finger points no more come in exclaiming this man too to take the city of priamus did the celestials give and honoured by the god he homeward came but now if of the former he shall pay the blood back and for those who cease to live dying for death's in turn new punishment he dooms who being mortal would not pray with an unmischievous demon to have been born who would not hearing thus agamemnon ah me i am struck a right aimed stroke within me chorus silence who is it shouts stroke right aimedly a wounded one agamemnon ah me indeed again a second struck by chorus this work seems to me completed by this ah me of the kings but we somehow may together share in solid counsellings chorus one i in the first place my opinion tell you to cite the townsmen by help cry to house here chorus two 
to me it seems we ought to fall upon them at quickest prove the fact by sword fresh flowing chorus three and i of such opinion the partaker vote to do something not to wait the main point chorus four tis plain to see for they prelude as though of a tyranny the signs they gave the city chorus five for we waste time while they this waiting's glory treading to ground allow the hand no slumber chorus six i know not chancing on some plan to tell it tis for the doer to plan of the deed also chorus seven and i am such another since i'm schemeless how to raise up again by words a dead man chorus eight what and protracting life shall we give way thus to the disgracers of our home these rulers chorus nine why tis unbearable but to die is better for death than tyranny is the riper finish chorus ten what by the testifying ah me of him shall we prognosticate the man is perished chorus eleven we must quite know ere speak these things concerning for to conjecture and quite know are two things chorus twelve the same to praise i from all sides abound in clearly to know atreides what he's doing clytemnestra much having then before to purpose spoken the opposite to say i shall not shamed be for how should one to enemies in semblance friends enmity proposing sorrow's net frame enclose a height superior to outleaping to me indeed the struggle of old not mindless of an old victory came with time i grant you i stand where i have struck things once accomplished and so have done and this deny i shall not as that his fate was nor to fly nor ward off a wrap-round with no outlet as for fishes i fence about him the rich woe of the garment i strike him twice and in a double ah me he let his limbs go there and to him fallen the third blow add i giving of below ground zeus guardian of the dead the votive favour thus in the mind of him he rages falling and blowing forth a brisk blood spatter strikes me with a dark drop of slaughterous dew rejoicing no less than at the god-given dewy comfort the sown stuff in its birth throws from the calyx since so these things are argives my revered here ye may rejoice if ye rejoice but i boast if it were fit on corpse to pour libation that would be right right over and above too the cup of evils in the house he having filled with such curses himself coming drinks of chorus we wonder at thy tongue since bold mouth truly is she who in such speech boasts o'er her husband clytemnestra ye test me as i were a witless woman but i with heart intrepid to you knowers say and thou if thou wilt or praise or blame me comes to the same this man is agamemnon my husband dead the work of the right hand here i of a just artificer so things are chorus what evil o woman food or drink earth bread or scent from the flowing sea of such having fed didst thou set on thee this sacrifice and popular cries of a curse on thy head off thou hast thrown him off hast cut the man from the city but off from the city thyself shalt be cut to the citizens a hate immense clytemnestra now indeed thou adjudgest exile to me and citizens hate and to have popular curses nothing of this against the man here bringing who no more awe checked than as it were a beast's fate with sheep abundant in the well-fleeced graze flocks sacrificed his child dearest fruit of travail to me as song spell against threkian blowings not him did it behoove thee hence to banish pollution's penalty but hearing my deeds justicer rough thou art now this i tell thee to threaten thus me one prepared to have thee on like conditions thy hand conquering or me rule but if god the opposite ordain us thou shalt learn late taught certes to be modest chorus greatly intending thou art much mindful too hast thou cried since thy mind with its slaughter outpouring part is frantic that over the eyes a patch of blood with blood to match is plain for a pride yet still bereft of friends thy fate is blow with blow to expiate 
clytemnestra and this thou hearest of my oaths just warrant by who fulfilled things for my daughter justice ate erinus by whose help i slew him not mine the fancy fear will tread my palace so long as on my heart there burns a fire i guess thus as before well caring for me since he to me is shield no small of boldness here does he lie outrager of this female dainty of all the creseids under ilion and she the captive the soothsayer also and couchinate of this man oracle speaker faithful bedfellow i the sailors benches they wore in common nor unpunished did so since he is thus while as for her swan fashion her latest having chanted dying wailing she lies to him a sweetheart me she brought to my beds by nicety the wet of dalliance chorus alas that some fate would come upon us in quickness neither much sickness nor bed-keeping and bear unended sleeping now that subdued is our keeper the kindest of mood having borne for a woman's sake much strife by a woman he withered from life ah me law-breaking helena who won hast many so many souls undone neath troia and now the consummated much memorable curse hast thou made flower forth red with the blood no rains disperse that which was then in the house strife all subduing the woe of a spouse clytemnestra no wise of death the fate burdened by these things supplicate nor on helena turn thy wrath as the man destroyer as she who hath being but one many and many a soul undone of the men the danaoi and wrought immense annoy clytemnestra daimon who fallest upon this household and the double-raced tantalidae a rule minded like theirs displaced thou rulest with me now whose heart thou gallest and on the body like a hateful crow stationed all out of tune his chant to chant does something vaunt now of a truth hast thou set upright thy mouth's opinion naming the sprite the triply gross o'er the race that has dominion for through him it is that eros the carnage liquor in the belly is bred ere ended quite is the elder throw new ichor chorus certainly great of might and heavy of wrath the sprite thou tellest of in the palace woe woe an evil tale of a fate by ate's malice rendered insatiate oh oh king king how shall i beweep thee from friendly soul whatever say thou liest where webs of the spider or sweep thee in impious death life breathing away o oh, me me this couch not free by a slavish death subdued thou art from the hand by the two-edged dart clytemnestra thou boastest this deed to be mine but leave off styling me the agamemnonian wife for showing himself in sign of the spouse of the corpse thou dost see did the ancient bitter avenging ghosts of atreus savage host pay the man here as price a full groan for the young one's sacrifice chorus that no cause indeed of this killing art thou who shall be witness-bearer how shall he bear it how but the sire's avenging ghost might be in the deed a sharer he is forced on and on by the kin-born flowing of blood black ares to where having gone he shall leave off flowing done at the frozen child's flesh food king king how shall i beweep thee from friendly soul whatever say thou liest where webs of the spider or sweep thee in impious death life breathing away o oh, me me this couch not free by a slavish death subdued thou art from the hand by the two-edged dart clytemnestra no death unfit for the free do i think this man's to be for did not himself a slavish curse to his household decree but the scion of him myself did nurse that much bewailed iphigenia he having done well by and as well nor worse been done too let him not in hades loudly bear himself proudly being by sword destroying death immersed for that sword's punishment himself inflicted first chorus i at a loss am left of a feasible scheme of mind bereft where i may turn for the house is falling 
i fear the bloody crash of the rain that ruins the roof as it bursts amain the warning drop has come to a stop destiny hath justice wet for other deed of hurt on other wet stones yet woe earth earth would thou hast taken me ere i saw the man i see on the pallet bed of the silver-sided bath vase dead who is it shall bury him who sing his dirge can it be true that thou wilt dare the same to do having slain thy husband thine own to make his funeral moan and for the soul of him in place of his mighty deeds a graceless grace to wickedly institute by whom shall the tale of praise o'er the tomb at the godlike man be sent from the truth of his mind as he toils intent clytemnestra it belongs not to thee to declare this object of care by us did he fall down there did he die down there and down no less we will bury him there and not beneath the wails of the household over his death but iphigenia with kindliness his daughter as the case requires facing him full at the rapid flowing passage of groans shall both hands throwing around him kiss that kindest of sires chorus this blame comes in the place of blame hard battle it is to judge each claim he is borne away who bears away and the killer has all to pay and this remains while zeus is remaining the doer shall suffer in time for such is ordaining who may cast out of the house its cursed brood the race is to ate glued clytemnestra thou hast gone into this oracle with a true result for me then i will to the diamond of the plesthenidae making an oath with all these things comply hard as they are to bear for the rest going from out this house a guest may he wear some other family to naught with the deaths of kin by kin and keeping a little part of my goods wholly am i contented in having expelled from the royal house these frenzied moods the mutually murderous i guess thus o light propitious of day justice bringing i may say truly now that men's avengers the gods from high of earth behold the sorrows seeing as i have in the spun robes of the erinnes this man here lying sight to me how pleasant his father's hands contrivances repaying for atreus this land's lord of this man father thyestes my own father to speak clearly his brother too being in the rule contested drove forth to exile from both town and household and coming back to the hearth turned a suppliant wretched thyestes found the fate assured him not to die bloodying his paternal threshold just there but hostwise this man's impious father atreus soul keenly more than kindly seeming to joyous hold a flesh day to my father served up a meal the flesh of his own children the feet indeed in the hands top divisions he hid high up in isolated sitting but their unshowing parts in ignorance taking he forthwith eats food as thou seest perdition to the race and then ware of the deed ill omened he shrieked oh falls back vomiting from the carnage and fate on the polypidae past bearing he prays down putting in his curse together the kicking down of the feast that so might perish the race of pleisthenes entire and thence is that it is given thee to see this man prostrate and i was rightly of this slaughter stitch man since me being third from ten with my poor father he drives out being then a babe in swathe bands but grown up back again has justice brought me and of this man i got hold being without doors fitting together the whole scheme of ill will so sweet and fine even to die were to me seeing as i have this man in the toils of justice chorus i guess thus arrogance and ills i love not dost thou say willing thou didst kill the man here and alone plot this lamentable slaughter i say thy head in justice will escape not the people's throwing know that stones and curses i guess thus thou such things soundest seated at the lower orage to those who rule at the ship's mid-bench thou shalt know being old how heavy is teaching to one of the like age bidden be modest but chains and old age and the pangs of fasting stand out before all else in teaching prophets at soul's cure dost not seeing aught see this too 
Against goads kick not, lest tripped up thou suffer. Chorus. Woman thou, of him coming new from battle, house guard. Thy husband's bed the while disgracing, for the army leader didst thou plan this fate too? Aegisthus. These words too are of groans the prime begetters. Truly a tongue opposed to Orpheus hast thou. For he led all things by his voice's grace charm, but thou upstirring them by these wild yelpings wilt lead them. Forced, thou wilt appear the tamer. Chorus. So, thou shalt be my king then of the Argaeans, who, not when for this man his fate thou plannest, darest to do this deed, thyself the slayer? I guess thus. For to deceive him was the wife's part, certes. I was looked after, foe, I old begotten. But out of this man's wealth will I endeavor to rule the citizens, and the no man minder him will I heavily yoke, by no means trace horse a corned up colt. But that bad friend in darkness, famine its housemate, shall behold him gentle. Chorus. Why then, this man here, from a coward spirit, didst not thou slay thyself, but helped a woman, the country's pest, and that of gods in the country, killed him, Orestes, where may he see light now, that coming hither back with gracious fortune, of both these he may be the all-conquering slayer? I guess thus. But since this to do thou thinkest, and not talk, thou soon shalt know. Up then, comrades dear, the proper thing to do, not distant this. Chorus. Up then, hilt in hold, his sword let every one aright dispose. I guess thus. Ay, but I myself too, hilt in hold, do not refuse to die. Chorus, thou wilt die, thou sayest, to who accept it, we the chance demand. Clytemnestra, no wise, O belovedest of men, may we do other ills. To have reaped away these even is a harvest much to me. Go both thou and these the old men to the homes appointed each, ere ye suffer. It behooved one do these things just as we did. And if of these troubles there should be enough, we may assent by the diamond's heavy heel, unfortunately stricken ones. So a woman's counsel hath it, if one judge it learning worth. I guess thus. But to think that these at me the idle tongue should thus o'er bloom, and throw out such words, the diamond's power experimenting on, and of modest knowledge missing, me the ruler. Chorus. Ne'er may this befall Argaeans, wicked man to fawn before. I guess thus. Anyhow, in after days, will I, yes, I, be at thee yet. Chorus. Not if hither should the daimon make Orestes straightway come. I guess thus. Oh, I know myself that fugitives on hopes are pasture fed. Chorus. Do thy deed, get fat, defiling justice, since the power is thine. I guess thus. Know that thou shalt give me satisfaction for this folly's sake. Chorus. Boast on bearing thee audacious like a cock his females by. Clytemnestra, have not thou respect for these same idle yelpings? I and thou will arrange it, ruling o'er this household excellently well. End of part three. Recording by expatriate in Bangor, Maine. End of Agamemnon by Aeschylus. Translated by Robert Browning. 1812 to 1889.